Hallelujah. We want to welcome everybody that's here tonight. We want to welcome you in the presence of God right now. Before we dive in, I'm just going to encourage you right now just to just to go ahead and just to set that atmosphere where you are right now. Very powerful praise and worship that we just absorbed, that we just we just took part of. I'm just going to encourage you right now, right now, wherever you are in your own place. Some of you might be, you might be touching in. I know a few of you are at work right now. You're touching base at work. That's okay. Just to reverently, solemnly in your heart right now, just to create that atmosphere. The atmosphere doesn't demand, doesn't dictate that you have to shout. You can create that atmosphere right now. Just center, focus, put your mind on God. Tune in to God right now. Yes, foster that presence. Foster the presence of God. Create that atmosphere that will foster the presence of God. You might be at home. You might be in your room. Just go ahead right now and just to take your time and just to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You don't have to rush into it. Just take your time and just to let God know that you appreciate him. Let him know that, Lord, I thank you for the day that I've had. Some of you, you might not, you might not have had, you might not have had the perfect day, but guess what? You're alive. You are alive. And that is enough just to give him thanks. Just to give him praise, just to glorify him. That is enough. That is enough. That is enough, beloved. Yes, you might not have had the perfect day. We might not have all the money that you want in, that you want in your bank account. You might not have the car that you want. You might not be living in the house, that big house yet. You might not see the promise yet. But it is important <laughs> that we learn to worship God in spite of. And so tonight, right now, just take the time. In spite of what's happening, in spite of whatever issue, it doesn't matter even if the day was a horrible day. <clears throat> you serve a God that is great. Even though the day was bad, you serve a God that is good. And so that is enough for you to bless him. So go ahead right now and just let him know. Let him know, Lord, you are the most high. I bless you. I extol you. We magnify you. You are king of all nations. You are head of all governments of this world. There are no men that are higher than you. No men, nor angels, nothing, no principality, no powers. You sit high and he rules all by himself. Somebody just go ahead and just bless the Lord. Just go ahead and touch him. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. Right now, go ahead and bless him. Go ahead and bless him. Just tell him thanks. Just enter into a few more seconds of thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my relatives. Some of you, you might not have the best loving family in the entire world. You might not. Your family might have a lot of issues, but nevertheless, you have relatives. They're alive. Yes, even if it's one person, even if it's one person, you can always call that person. Yes, some of you, yes. Yes, you don't have the best, you don't have the perfect family, but guess what? You serve a God that still gave you people, he still placed people around you, you still have a support group. There are persons who, I'm telling you, beloved, they don't have anybody around them. They don't have anyone around them. There are persons in this world, there are persons in Jamaica, there are persons in your community, you might not know it, they live all by themselves, they're alone, they have nobody to call, There is. they have no one. No one at all, but we have to give God thanks. That's some listen. We have even a church family. You might not have relatives around you, but guess what? You have a church family and you're on tonight. Bless God. That is enough to bless the Lord for. Somebody needs to thank God for your church family. Thank God for your brothers and your sisters. My God Almighty, you might not have parents, but the word of God says that when your mother and your father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. What a wonderful promise. Even when mother and father, even when brothers and sisters, even when relatives will desert you, that's enough to thank God that, listen, Lord, even when they go, you, Lord, 
you, Lord, will never leave because God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. And so in the absence of biological brothers and sisters, God has given you a church. Yes, he's given you brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we have to thank the Lord. Some of you, I'm telling you, you know more than anybody else. Yes, you would love to have relatives that you can call on and lean on. But when they're not there, the Lord has blessed you with a church family that loves, that cares, that prays for you. And guess what? That is enough for you to say, Lord, I thank you. That's enough for you to give him thanks tonight. Oh, yes, we're in a moment of thanksgiving. Those persons who are coming in right now, you're joining, you're coming in, you're coming in, you're coming in. And I'm telling you, it's a moment of thanksgiving where we focus on giving God some thanks. You have to be able to give God thanks. You have to be, you have to, you have to know how to get in. Beloved, I'm telling you, this is very important. We have to learn how to give God thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercies endure it forever. Yes. We have to be thankful. Giving thanks is a form of gratitude. Yes, it is the best way to show your gratitude to God. When we are not thankful, we are ungrateful to God. And so we have to, in everything that you do, you must give thanks. In everything, you must give thanks. Yes, we don't see the money yet. You don't see the opportunity yet, but you still have to be thankful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it doesn't matter where you are right now. Yes, you have a job. There are persons right now that they have no job. Their Christmas is looking very bleaky. The Christmas for them is looking very, very bad because they don't have no one to talk to. They don't have a job. They don't have a business. They don't even have family around them. But we can give God thanks because even though the situation that you are in is not perfect, it might not be the perfect scenario. But guess what? It's not the worst. So you must learn to have a heart of gratitude. Gratefulness is flowing from my heart. The songwriter said, I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. I'm grateful. Gratefulness is flowing from my heart. Beloved, we have to be grateful. Learn how to be grateful. Yes, when we are ungrateful, we take unto ourselves a curse. You know, did you know that? Yes, a heart that does not know how to be grateful to God. My God, you're stuck in ungratefulness. It separates you from the blessings of God. Because when you have, when you're ungrateful, it is the first sign of a lack of faith. Yes, we don't believe that God is able, so we are ungrateful. Yes, we want more. Lord, I want more. I think I deserve more. Lord, why don't I have enough more money? Lord, why don't I have more opportunities? Why is my business not giving me more? Why aren't my children doing better, more, better? No, be grateful. And while we work and while we pray to improve things, while you pray to make life better, be grateful with the little that you have. God is speaking to somebody tonight. You must be grateful. You must be grateful. You must have a heart of gratitude. And for those of you who are coming in right now, come in with a heart of gratitude. Find something to tell the Lord that you're grateful for. You can start with life. You are alive and you're on this, this platform tonight. Lord, I thank you. Don't take life for granted. My God Almighty, do not take life for granted. Lord, I thank you. I am grateful because I have the gift of life. Life is a gift. Yes, it doesn't mean that because you are, yes, because I am alive now, you are guaranteed to be alive tomorrow. It is a gift that is given to man. Yes, and just as how God gave us that gift and he blew the breath of life in us and he gave you a purpose, there's a time when life will come to an end. There's a time when we, a relative's life will come to an end. That is why we have to be grateful for what we have now make the best use of it. So somebody right now with the heart of gratitude, just tell him, Lord, I thank you for everything. Father, ask him, Lord, I need you to forgive me if I've ever been ungrateful. I need somebody just to ask him, Lord, forgive me if I have had a heart, oh God, that has not been grateful. Mm. Forgive me of ungratefulness. 
because even though you have blessed me with so much, sometimes I'm still asking for more and not being thankful of what you've given me. And so, Lord, we ask right now that you give us that heart, give us that mind of gratitude because you are the faithful God. You are a God that is faithful. He's faithful in all his ways. Hallelujah. And so tonight, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you thanks. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank the Lord, beloved, for everybody that is coming in. We see we have a few visitors. We have a few persons. Praise God. Bless you, Sister Vivian. Those persons who are outside of the island coming in, Sister Vivian, coming in from the UK. God bless you. I'm seeing a few persons. Brother Michael from the United States. We have a few visitors. Praise God. We also have Sister Maroney from the United States. On all visitors, all KJ members, all partners, we welcome you tonight to another prayer service. We're not going to be long. But we just want to pray and just to thank the Lord with a heart of gratitude. We just want to bless you, bless God, and thank God for every one of you. That's something that I have to be grateful for. I thank God for this wonderful Kingdom Grace family. Praise God, all the visitors, the partners, and the wonderful workers. I just want to thank the Lord for you. And it's a blessing that we are here. I'm going to share with you very quickly. I'm going to ask you just to turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, and this is just a thought that the Lord wants to cement in our spirits and in our hearts tonight, even while you go to bed, even while you go to sleep tonight, yes, you're going to have this word, just let it soak into you, just let it soak into you, meditate, allow this word to marinate, Jeremiah 29 verse 13, and it says, and you shall seek me mm -hmm. and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Wow. This is God Almighty, his word. This is his word now speaking to his people and he's releasing this word and he's saying, listen, this is a promise now. Remember, God, you, God's word will never change. Heaven and earth will pass away before one jot of his word. Yes, Rose, the word of God, according to Jeremiah 29, verse 13, this is the promise. God is saying that, listen, this is the prerequisite. If you want to find me, if you want to commune with me, if you want to have covenant relationship with me, and he's speaking to his people, this is God Almighty now directly speaking to you. And I, and he's giving you, he's giving you the blueprint of how to have a deep communion and covenant relationship with him. If you, you're there watching, man of God, woman of God, child of God, you want to know you are hungry for God and you are saying, Lord, I really want you, I really want you. God is saying that, yes, yes, if you want to come and find me, you first have to, he said, start, so that's it. And Ye shall seek me and find me. This is the condition. When you search for me with all your heart, my God Almighty. What does that mean? With all my heart. It means that everything that's, that makes you up as a person, yes, everything that you do, every aspect of your life, Yes, every aspect of your life. Now he's saying 50%, no, 80, no, 99% will not do. He's saying that if you want to find me, you must first seek me with every aspect of your being. And when you read this, you realize now that there are a lot of, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people, whether in church, outside of church, that have not found God. Mm experiencing the presence of God is not finding him. It's not the same. I want you to get this tonight. Get this tonight. If you experience the grace of God and you experience the presence of God moving on your body and you feel his presence, it's not the same as finding him, beloved. It's not the same. It's not. It's not. <laughs> this is word I'm giving you. A lot of you are surprised. Yes, because having the presence of God on you is different 
It's totally different from having a covenant bonded relationship with you and Christ. Yes. And God is saying it's not enough to just feel his presence because you can enter into an atmosphere. A lot of you, yes, you enter into an atmosphere. Some of you, you come like Sunday. We had such a very powerful worship session and we just could not come out of it because the presence of God was in the room. And when God is in the room, when the presence of God is in the room, everybody experiences you. So you feel it. You not just see persons speaking in tongues or you not just see people running, but you yourself, you can feel it. Sometimes the presence of God fills a room. It is tangible. It is palpable. It, it, it feel, you can actually, like you can touch it. And you feel the presence of God on you. But that is different now. Feeling the presence of God on you is different from finding God, having, having an intimate relationship with him, where when you seek after him, you find him. The presence of God is not something that you seek after because the presence of God can just come in a room. Yes, you can be in a prayer meeting. That is why an unsaved person can just come into a, a, a service and the presence of God can just come on them and they can just even receive the Holy Ghost after speaking tongues. Some of them will say, my God, I feel like fire on me. There are others that say, wow, I just, I, they can't explain it. They just say that they feel God because the presence of God is not something that you seek after. God himself. My God, let me tell you something, beloved. I need you to get this. Get this revelation. That is why in the Old Testament, even before the Holy Spirit, even before God, even before God released himself, his son, Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ died, and he ascended, and he sent the comforter. Before all of that happened in the Old Testament, I'm telling you, the presence of God used to be on people. Hmm. Yes. But he wasn't in them. Did you get that? The presence of God was on people. The presence of God came on Elijah. He ran. Yes. Run, leave a chariot. Yes. Yes. The Bible tells you the presence of God, the presence of God, the presence. The presence, yes. So don't be, don't get, don't get frightened when you feel the presence of God and you think that, wow, I feel God in church, and you think that you have this this rosy relationship with God. No, anybody, even an unsaved, even somebody that has never heard of Jesus Christ, can step into a room and come in an atmosphere. Even somebody that is far from God, when beloved, remember you are, you carry the presence, you know. You carry the presence, so somebody can come in your atmosphere, you know, and 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 have an encounter with the presence, but they do not know God. Mm. Saul prophesied when he got in the presence of the prophets. He went in the company of prophets, and because that presence was there and that grace to prophesy was there, he prophesied. But Paul, but Saul did not have a relationship, that covenant relationship with God, you know. Mm -hmm. So you realize now a man walk off the road and come into church. He knows nothing about God, but he still feels the presence of God. And he, he feels it. He can't explain what it is, but he can tell you that God is in the room. But that is different now from those persons who have a covenant relationship, who seek after God with all of their heart, and then they find him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So his presence, his presence can be for everybody. But God is saying that it's not about just encountering his presence. It's not just feeling his presence in a room. It's not just having, a, because that is temporary. We're talking about cultivating a relationship, finding, seeking him. Because remember, you can only, he's telling you here in his word, you can only find him if you seek him. And so you and I, we have to ensure now that we purposefully and intentionally seek after God so that we can find him. How do I seek after God? Seeking means that it is persistent. Seeking, speak the word seeking. The essence of seek is persistent. It is something that you have to continually do. Until seek, he's saying, You in, in, in order to find me, he says, and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, God is saying, 
and he's looking for persons who will not just be, you're, you're not going to be satisfied now just by feeling you're coming into a room and yes, the presence of God was in that room. And then when you leave the room, you leave the presence. Mm. God is looking for some people who are going to get hungry and thirsty after him. You want to wake up in his presence. You want to go to the bathroom in his presence. You want to go to work in his presence. You want while you are at work, the presence of God is there. You want when you're driving home, the presence is there. Yes, God is looking for people who want a relationship, that lasting presence, having a relationship with God that comes through seeking him. It's nothing temporary. Mm -hmm. There are some of you that you have been comfortable with just having a Sunday morning touch. Mm -hmm. Just having a Sunday morning touch where, yes, I feel the presence of God Sunday. And as you step through those doors and you step out of the presence of God, because you do not have that relationship with him, because you are not actively seeking, because you are not hungry, and because you are not thirsty, you, once you leave the presence that is cultivated for you, somebody else, whether it be through praise and worship, whether it be the grace that is on the house, it's cultivated outside of you. So the presence of God, the atmosphere is created outside of you so that when you leave, you don't carry the glory with you because you don't have a relationship with God. Yes. That is why some of you, you, you need a praise and worship team to carry on usher into the presence. Why? Because there is no relationship. You have not been seeking him. You have not found him. And so you need a praise and worship team to usher you into the presence. God is saying that the relationship he's looking for is that you don't need even music to take you there. You just need to say, Lord, your son, your daughter, Lord, I am here. And the presence, you carry the glory of God. God is looking for those persons who can be glory carriers. My God Almighty. Yes. Glory carriers. That's what he's looking for. It's not enough to have a temporary experience. Mm. But God is looking for those persons who can intentionally create the atmosphere. Wow. My God Almighty. He's looking for thermostats and not what? Mm. Yes, he's looking for those persons who you create the atmosphere. Wow, that's very powerful. First Lady Lewis. Unbelievers can identify the presence which is temporary, but believers cultivate an atmosphere that is intentional to usher God in our presence. My God Almighty. That's powerful. Yes. And so what separates an unbeliever from a, from, a, from a child of God? A child of God is a person who is plugged in. You have a relationship with God so much so that you can create the atmosphere anywhere you go. You do not wait on anybody to take you there. You take people in the presence. You are able to, to culture, to culture that atmosphere for the presence of God to come. It's not enough. Beloved, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough to just come and, and you, you are dependent on somebody's fire, you are dependent on somebody's worship, you are dependent on a keyboard, you are dependent on a praise leader. God is saying he wants people who can find him. You will seek him when you hunger and thirst. Yes, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Yes. Somebody just type that, Lord, I need to be filled with you. Yes. Holy Spirit, I need to be filled. Fill me. Create the atmosphere. You have to hunger. You have to thirst for God. Yes. So you have to do some some self-reflection now. And you have to say, Lord, am I just like someone who is even unsaved? I don't have a relationship with you. I've been in church for years. I've been in church for, for so long, but I can't culture the atmosphere for myself. I have to wait. I, I, the presence, for me to enjoy your presence, it, it has to be dependent on another source. 
It is dependent. You, you can you imagine enjoying the presence of God is dependent on somebody else. Mm. So if somebody else does not create the atmosphere for you, you cannot enjoy the presence of God. There are persons that have been in, in, they have been in church for years, but guess what? If they are at home, they cannot entertain the presence of God. Think, do some self-reflection, beloved. When was the last time that in your home now, not at church, but in your home, you felt the Shekinah presence of God where you ushered the presence of God? You have been a relationship with him through seeking him and finding him. He comes and he sits on you in your very home, a long lasting, not a very temporary, temporary thing. I'm talking about a lasting presence of God where you can just enjoy it. Beloved, if you are not experiencing this, I am telling you, you need to pray and say, you are in trouble if you cannot experience the presence of God outside of the four walls of the church. If you cannot experience the presence of God outside of another source creating that atmosphere for you, you are in trouble. The first sign, if you can't do it, it tells you that you, you're not, you're not having a relationship with God. You're not having a deep relationship with God. God is saying to his word, he says, and you shall seek me. Yes. And find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. It takes everything. It takes everything. It takes everything. It doesn't take just a one day. It doesn't, it doesn't take Sunday alone. I, I, I am sorry to burst your bubble. If you think that just coming to church on Sunday is going to be adequate to create that long-lasting relationship, a meaningful relationship with God, then you are in trouble. You are being deceived by the enemy. It's going to take you not just a Sunday in church, but it's going to take a daily, intentionally seeking after God, just pursuing him, actively pursuing him. Yes. I am not, you have to tell yourself, Lord, I am not comfortable. I am not pleased with just feeling a presence, feeling your presence one time or feeling your presence on Sunday. I need that relationship with you, my God Almighty. Yes, God is looking for relationship and he's looking for those persons who are ready to covenant with him. Covenant is deeper than just feeling a temporary presence. It is a long-lasting relationship with God where you give up yourself and God gives also. Yes, covenant, it is not just you just doing something and God staying afar off. No, it's when you draw nigh to him, he draw nigh to you. Covenant speaks to what? Both parties doing something. Both parties, God is going to come. He wants to draw an eye, but you have to do your part. Man of God, woman of God, tonight you have to do your part. God is saying he wants, he's calling somebody closer. He's calling you to give more of yourself in prayer. He's calling you to give more of yourself in worship. He's calling you right now to sharpen your focus, deep dive, deep dive into the word because you have to seek. Remember the word seek, it speaks to you. It's active. You have to actively do it. Seek doesn't mean just once. It means constantly and intentionally pursuing God. Yes. And so you have, yes, we have not arrived yet. God is saying that you have not arrived. Don't think you reach. You have not arrived yet. There is more. There is a deeper level in him to go. There is a higher level in him to go. Yes. What is separating you from the unsaved? The unsaved come in church and the unsaved feel the presence the same way. Just like how you feel the presence. But just like when the unsaved leaves out of the presence, they don't carry the glory. Just some of us, we're stepping out of the presence of God and we're not carrying the glory. We're not carrying the atmosphere because there's no relationship. There's no relationship with God. And so when you're at your home, you feel dry. When you're on the work, when you're on your job, you feel dry. That is why some of you, I'm telling you, that is why sometimes you feel so far from God. 
It is because your spirit is yearning. It's yearning for more. Lord, I want to be close to you. You need to make sure, somebody needs to make sure that when they leave here tonight, even when you go in your bed and you lie down, you cry before God and you say, God, just feel in your presence once on a Sunday. Just feel in your presence on Sunday is not enough. I need more. More of you. Lord, right now, the money not even important, the house not even important, the job not even important. I need more of you. My God, seek ye first the kingdom. Everything else will be added. God is saying he wants relationship. Relationship is what's going to separate you, beloved. Yes, it's what it's going to, it is the differentiator, having that deep meaningful relationship with God where you seek after him. You actively pursue him intentionally day after day, day after day. And beloved, it shows, it shows, it shows, it shows, it shows, it shows in the way you live your life that you're far from God. You don't have a relationship with him. It shows, it shows, it shows, it shows. It shows you, you, the way you will live your life. You can look at somebody and you will know that they do not have a relationship with God. Yes. My God, your worship, even in your worship, your worship, it is indicative to your relationship to God. There's no way you can have a relationship with God and you're not even a worshiper. My God Almighty. Because you're not used to being in the presence of God. Those persons who are used to being in the presence and you're used to having a relationship and a rapport with God, you have to worship. So there's no way you can say that, my God, I am a, I am a man of God. I am a powerful man of God. I am a powerful woman of God. I am not a worshiper. It means that you are far from God. Because anybody that encounters God, the first thing you do is you have to bow, you have to worship, you have to express, you have to know how to respond to his presence. Those persons who don't know how to respond to the presence of God, it's the first sign of a lack of relationship. That is why new converts, we tell you, you have to learn to appreciate the presence of God. You have to learn to seek after him in your own way. You start small, but you certainly must grow. You start small, but you certainly must grow and improve. Seek after God. You start praying for five minutes, but you have to start. You have to move away from five minutes to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You start just praying and saying, thank you, Jesus. All you can say is thank you, Jesus, when I get saved. Lord, I thank you for life. Lord, I thank you for life. But guess what? You have to move away from Lord, I thank you for life to thanking him for other things, being thankful for external things, thankful for family, thankful, learn to pray, progress and grow. That comes through a relationship, knowing and understanding how God has been so good for you. For, to you yes what he has done for you when you encounter God and you stay in his presence the more you read his word and the more you pray you will develop yes and so God is calling us out tonight he's calling us out and he's saying listen he wants more of us he wants more of you he wants more of me he wants more he wants a relationship and he's saying the only way we can find him the only way we're going to walk in this is if we search for him with all of our hearts make sure that the focus is on god nobody's saying that you are to leave your family or you are to leave your nine to five job and walk up no you can intentionally go on the job and you're doing your duties but you also have your mind on the Lord. And even while you're there typing on your computer or even while you are there on the road, even while you're driving, you are praying, you're, in, you're seeking and you're saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I am thirsty for you. As the deer panted for the water brook, so that my soul panted after you. You alone, God, you alone can fill this gap. You alone can fill this hunger. I am hungry. Your word declares, God, that if I am hungry and if I seek after, 
after you, he that is hunger, hunger and thirst after righteousness, I will be filled. I'm taking you by your word, Lord, and I am pushing because I am hungry. I am praying because I am hungry. I am worshiping you because I want to be filled. I want to be filled with your spirit. I want to be filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. I need an encounter with you. I do not want to be like the regular person. I don't just want to experience a temporary feel of your presence, but I want to live in your presence. I want to be a thermostat. I want to be able to create the atmosphere. I want heaven to recognize my voice. Those of you that heaven, heaven needs to recognize your voice in prayer. Heaven needs to recognize your voice in worship. Yes. And so God is calling us, beloved. God is calling us and you have to sacrifice. You have to come up higher. You have to go down deeper in prayer. You have to say, Lord, I am at a stage where, yes, I, I, I sense your presence and I feel your presence, but that's not enough. I want to live in it. I want the glory. I want to be a glory carrier. I want when I when I'm out on the road, the glory of God is with me. I don't have to wait on a choir. I do not have to wait on somebody to boost me up. I don't have to wait on a minister of music. I don't even need a keyboard. I just need to just remain. I just need to think about you, God, and immediately I can just touch you. I can launch myself in worship and create an atmosphere. Yes. Yes. You must be creators of atmosphere. But it starts by seeking him so that you can find him. Seek him with not just 50%, not 99%, but you have to seek him with all your heart. All your heart, all your heart, beloved. And so this is the word of God for you tonight. It is for some, it's something, it is something. It's something that you are going to have to pray and pray and pray. Even tonight, you have to sacrifice. There are some of you, you're going to your bed tonight. You're going to sacrifice and say, Lord, I'm going to spend an extra 30 minutes with you. Lord, I am going to spend an extra hour extra hour, one extra hour. There are some of you, you need to learn to stay in the presence of God. Yes, if you pray or if you worship for 10 minutes, you feel like you're stressed out. If you pray for 10 minutes, you feel like, you feel like, oh my God, the world is coming to an end. But guess what? You can spend two hours on social media. You don't see there's something wrong with that. That is demonic. You don't realize that something is wrong with that. You can spend two hours on social media easily. You can sit on your phone and scroll through on your phone for hours on top of hours. But if you pray for five minutes and 10 minutes, you're stressed out. If you come into the presence of God and worship is for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, you decide that, listen, I have to leave. This is too much. You don't realize that something is wrong. Pastor, I have to tell you that that is wrong. Are we so disconnected that somebody has to highlight that to say that is an issue that should not be so? You cannot feel, you cannot, you cannot, beloved. You are in trouble if you are comfortable spending time on your phone or talking to your friend, spending more time with friends on phone. If you cannot, if you cannot spend time the same time or more with God, I am not saying you can't spend time with friends. I'm not saying that you can't go on your phone because we're not robots. But you cannot be spending two or hour and a half. Young people, you cannot be spending one hour on your phone. There are some of you, you have to train yourself because once you took up the phone and start going through it, you're, oh my God, you're lost in it. People have to tell you, put on the phone, put on the phone. You come to even, there are persons who come to the house of God, they cannot even do without their phone. And I'm not talking about reading the Bible on the phone, having the Bible up. I am talking about people that are people in church going on social media. Demonic, an idol. Yes, yes. You have spent all your time with the phone. You know what you're doing? You have sought after the phone. And you have found it with all your heart. You have sought after social media. And you have found it with all your heart. While God is on the back burner, we are in trouble. 
Mm. You need to look in yourself. You need to look in yourself and say, Lord, I, have, I need to escape. Some of you, you need deliverance. You need deliverance from social media. You need deliverance from some friends. You cannot do, there's some, listen, this is dangerous. You know, it's creating idols. There are some of you, you cannot make a step in life if you don't talk to your BFF or your best friend. Oh, friend, what do you think? You don't even pray and ask God. You don't even consult the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what should I do? But what? You have to talk to your friend first at work. These are idols that we set up in our life while we neglect the Spirit of God. Beloved, I am telling you, you are in trouble if you're finding yourself in this position. You have to act fast. You have to act now because when it sets in and it becomes, and let me tell you something, it, it becomes a stronghold. Yes, yes. Yes, these things are stronghold. Yes, that comment. I agree. These things are stronghold that we, and you know what we do? We blame the devil and we say that the devil, there are some things that are not soul ties, you know. There are some things that are not generational curse. There are strongholds that some of us create in our own lives. Your own action creates strongholds and then you get bound by it. And you need deliverance. You open the door to these strongholds. Yes. Yes, and we will blame the devil. Sometimes we'll blame the devil for some things we do have nothing to do with. Some of these issues, some of your issues are self-inflicted. My God Almighty, mm, let me tell you, you better sit down and listen to this word tonight and say, Lord, I am, I am in need of deliverance. I need to find you. I need to seek you. Some of you have been seeking after the wrong thing. And when you find it, it's, and it's trouble that you're walking. You find trouble. God is saying, seek him so that you can find him. Seek him, not just with a part of you, but be passionate, be intentional. Seek him with all your heart. Yes, my God almighty. Wow. Hallelujah. Mm. I, 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 the, the Lord just told me something. Very, very, this is something that. Mm, wow. This is something that I'm going to do. It's something that I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it right now, but the Lord just spoke to me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 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 God is faithful enough. God is a faithful God. God is a faithful God. My God Almighty. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, O oh God, for your grace. We thank you, O oh God, for your word tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for this powerful word reminding us that we need to seek you if we want to find you, but we must do it with all our heart, with all of our mind, every aspect of us, we must seek after you, Lord. And so, Father, we desire tonight to seek after you. We want to seek your face. We will not settle with just a temporary fix, just a temporarily feel you. We do not want to just temporarily feel the presence of God. We do not want to relegate your presence to the house, to the four walls. We want to be able to feel you. We want to be able to commune with you at home, at play, at work, driving. We, not, we, we don't just want to utter words and pray, but Lord, we want to have a conversation, a dialogue with you. We want to have covenant with you. We don't want to speak at you, but we want to speak with you. We do not want to pray at you, but we want to have dialogue, communication, a relationship with you, Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we pray right now that you will forgive us, that you will give us the grace. Those persons that have created idols, that have created strongholds, my God Almighty, we ask and we pray tonight, God, that you will grant the grace, that you, Father, that you, through your spirit, that the fire of the Holy Ghost will come to burn away and to destroy strongholds that we have been building up in our lives. My God. Lord, we submit to your word. We are obedient and we are submitted to your word. We are submitted to your way. And we say that self must be slain. Self must be slain. Father, we want that deep. We desire that deep line relationship. Deep relationship. Deep relationship. We want to go beyond the surface. Beyond the surface. 
We want to go deep, deep call it to deep. Lord, we do not just want to say, Father, we come and we experience a touch on Sunday morning. But when we leave, when we step out of the presence, your glory doesn't go with us. And so, Father, we pray that each and every one, as individuals, we will be carriers of your glory. We will learn to foster and create an atmosphere to culture, that culture that we will get up. It will be a norm. We will live in your presence. Yes. We thank you, God, for what you have done. We thank you for your word. And we pray, God, that your grace will continue to be with us. We pray, oh God, for a divine covering over your people, even through this season we're entering. Tomorrow will be the 1st of December, entering into the Christmas, the holiday season. Lord, we know that the devil, the enemy, they're angel, agents of the enemy, agents of Satan that are laid up in communities, that are laid up on the job, that are there to disrupt, that are there to steal, kill, and destroy. But we speak against robbery, we speak against robbery right now. We speak against theft. We speak against every diabolical spirit that comes to steal. Yes, whether it be to steal the word of God or whether it be to attack homes of the believers and try to infiltrate and steal possessions. But we declare that the blood of Jesus will speak for us. Let there be a covering right now on each and every home. We declare covering on our possessions, covering on our assets, covering on your money, covering on your children. Yes, while you go through this period, remember to pray, 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 declare over your children. Yes, declare the covering, the blood of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus on every young person and every child of kingdom grace. Every partner, we declare a blood covering. Every member, workers, we declare the blood of Jesus will speak for us, will go before us. Let the angels of the Lord encamp around us to keep us in all our ways. Even in our uprising and our down sitting, our going and our coming in, we declare that we are kept by the power of God. Let there be a spiritual, a wall of fire, impregnable, where the enemy will, he cannot, he cannot touch you. The hand of the enemy shall not come nigh you because you are covered in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless God for all the visitors. Do we have any first time visitor? No, no first time. No first time, but we're here as a family tonight. All the Kingdom Grace members and partners, God bless you so much. God bless you so much. Those people from United States that are on Sister Maroon, God bless you. Yes, Brother Michael from Connecticut and Lady Vivian, they're in England. It's about 3 a.m. in England right now, and she's up and she's on and she's blessing God. That's a faithful woman. God bless you, Lady Vivian. God bless you for being so faithful. I'm telling you, 3 a.m. in the morning and you are online with us, partaking of the word and being blessed. So God bless you for that. God bless you. So God bless you, everyone. We're going to allow you to go. Remember all the announcements. We will meet again Sunday coming. Everybody be in the house. All of our members or everyone you are reminded, come be here in worship. Be there in worship. It's going to be a blessing. So God bless you. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts, let them be acceptable in thy sight, O God. You are our strength and our redeemer. We release you in the grace of God. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. Sleep well, rest well. Bless you.